Hi guys, it's just me again. I was just experimenting with this Starship Roden coil, <clears throat> and I wanted to show you something interesting I found out. I was trying to find out how the field is actually oscillating in this particular coil. Um, right now I have it set at 7 hertz, um, which is really slow. Slow enough that I can visually see what's going on, hopefully. It's hooked up to this amplifier still, if you saw my other video. Uh, my other video was a, uh, a speaker I made out of this coil here. Pulled it off there. But uh, I wanted to show you this. I got a magnet, a uh, couple of magnets, uh, on a screwdriver so I can hold the top so it can swing. Uh, now, this is at six, uh, 7 hertz. And as I get this screwdriver close, you can see, see it oscillating from left to right. The coil's kind of moving too. Uh, I can turn this any direction and it still oscillates from left to right all the way around doesn't matter uh, but what I found interesting is if I get this magnet down inside this coil where it's almost equal with the coil it almost everything almost stops well <laughs> I say that I kinda bent this coil up doing things with it Well, as you can see, the screwdriver is steady right there. The coil wants to move. And as I pull it out, the screwdriver wants to move and the coil wants to stay still. Same thing on the other side. Just some interesting effects. Um, whoa, oh, that's bad. Um, hold on a minute. Uh, a YouTube username, HHO for Volts, showed that you can uh, fold this coil in half. Uh, it's going to be hard to do holding the camera, but that's okay. Destroying my pretty coil, that's okay. So now I got this coil folded in half, and uh, you can have like a nice field right here then. And uh, this still oscillates the same in all directions. No matter which way I turn it, it still oscillates from left to right. Um, rather interesting but uh, I guess that's something to uh, take in uh, mark on some notes and uh, further experimenting with this type of coil once I get a, uh, a better version built uh, what I'd like to do and I don't know if I explained this very well in my last video, but according to the Rodin math and the original Rodin coil, um, you would have three coils, two which are physical wire coils, and one which is um, a blank coil. And uh, what I'd like to do is weave two of these on top of each other, 10 degrees apart, and leaving the other 10 degrees for the empty space or the blank coil. Um, if you look at his math, that would be the 669339 column. Um, but I probably will actually weave the two together so that I'll start two pins. And there's another problem I ran into. This is so small that my pins practically hit. I can't get wire through it. So I'll have to get some different uh, T's or, or something here but uh, basically I would have start here on both of these and then come down to the second point and basically they would cross in the center back down to here and they cross again up to three and cross again to four all the way back to uh, back to twelve so um, I'm gonna try that and then uh, then I can run 
multiple phases through the coil and see what I get there. I think that would that's going to work out really well. Um, I think what I'm going to do next time is instead of flattening the coil, I'm actually going to use hot glue and hot glue everything in place so when I take it off the form, it does not change its shape. It will be as tall as it is when I made it and everything will be the just just like it is when you weave it because when I weave this it looks it looks awesome it was really cool it was very pretty uh, it still looks alright but uh, you know all the world all the wires are smashed and I just think it would be better if they were all the way they were when they were weaved because they were exactly in line um, I don't know if that would be good or bad but uh, I'll experiment with it and let you guys know but uh, that's it so I will see you guys sometime later.